In today's show, I'm going to tell you why Scotty Barnes is a bust. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore Beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free. We are available on all platforms. Here I am to tell you about how bad Scott Barnes is. He's a bust. What a, what a joke of an award anti-American bias, giving a, a Raptor from Canada the Rookie of the Year last season. I'm going to break it all down for you and tell you why you're all wrong about Scotty Barnes. <laughs> Obviously, I'm joking. Um, but Raptors fans get so fired up about it that that's I put the title on this video because I wanted to see how many people will get drawn. I'm just trying some clickbait nonsense for this one video because it fires people so often. People already think that I hate the Raptors, so I might as well lean into it. Scotty Barnes is trash. The Raptors are terrible. They should get moved to Kentucky. You're all bad in Canada. I hate Canada. Is that enough? Are we good with that? Yeah? We're good? All right. That's not what we're doing here. We're doing a fantasy basketball preview for the Toronto Raptors. I hope you left lots of angry comments about Barnesy being a bust. We're going to talk locked on fantasy basketball bowl. Warney, I couldn't keep a straight faith. face. Let's get it on, Gilly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're down to the last three divisions. Don't stress if you haven't received invites. There'll still be some coming. I haven't sent them all out yet. They will all come soon. But keep sending your entries in. Points and categories. Categories are getting way more entries than points. Your email, lofbbowl at gmail.com. It's a 360-team league for categories and for points. $25 entry, $4,500 grand prize. Rules are linked below. They're also in the show notes of the audio podcast. So make sure you're checking them out. You email F L O F B L O F B bowl at gmail.com. In the subject line, write Raptors Cats if you want in the category league. In the subject line, write Raptors Points if you want in the points league. And then later in the show, I will tell you something that you can put in the description of the or in the body of the email to let me know that you listened and got the keyword to get yourself into the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Bowl. This is the third last division that we're doing, the Raptors and the points. Raptors and the points, the Raptors for categories and for points. That's what I'm trying to say. So we're going to talk about this Raptors team, what the fantasy outlook looks like. Let's get into it. Only 48 quality games. That's a low number. It's not ideal. It's not terrible, but it's not ideal. Uh, 12 back-to-backs a league low. That's great, especially considering... Some of the stuff that old mate Nick Nurse does with the playing time. So we don't have as many of those issues. And that might be useful for someone like a Freddles Van Vliet who occasionally gets corn chip knees and might need to sit if there was more back-to-backs. Their playoff schedule is not great. It is at least standard. It's 10 games March 19th end. That's a 3-3-4. It's 10 games for March 26th. That's a 3-4-3. And it's 10 games in Yahoo default, which is worse because a lot of the Yahoo default teams play 12. They only have 10, 4-3-3. That's the April 2nd end. So their schedule overall, outside of the 12 back-to-backs, which is really good, it's a little bit middling to below average in most of the other spots for this team for their fantasy schedule. So what's impacting the progression? Progression? The projections. I can't speak. For the um, Toronto Raptors, quick note, I'm recording this on the 23rd of September. So um, in it well in advance of when you're seeing this. So I apologize if the Raptors have made any big move. Um, I just was going away for a couple of days. So I pre-recorded this thing. And if something does happen, then when I get back, which will be tomorrow, tomorrow will be the live shows again. Well, you know, in, in, in sequence shows, we'll start again tomorrow with the Utah Jazz. Hopefully they've done something, Jesus, um, to make sense of their roster. Um, if the Raptors have done anything, we'll throw a show together for that as well. So what are the pressure points on this squad? Is Nick Nurse still crazy? Because the minutes that he played, his guys were insane. And I know everyone loves Nick Nurse. I love him. I think he's a top five coach in the NBA. Everyone loves Masai Ujiri. 
I think he's a top five GM as well. These guys are not immune to criticism. Nurses rotations were crazy. 40 minutes a night for everybody, basically, all the starters. And that's because he didn't trust the players on the bench. And that's on Masai. Masai is bringing the players in. If you're not bringing any player in that Nick Nurse wants to play five minutes a night, look, give me a guard and we're going to have the same problem this year. That's, a, that's an issue. The guards on this team are dreadfully thin. And Nurse might be, despite, you know, Fred Van Vliet just crumbling. Trent got injured at one point as well. But Ananobi's hip was rooted all year. How much of that is minutes? I don't know. Oh, they're professional athletes, Josh. I should be able to go, yeah, but I'm pretty sure the research tells you the more you're out there playing and the more fatigued you get, the higher likelihood there is of injury. So it's great on one hand from a fantasy. Man, look at Pascal Siakam's playing 40 a night. Look at these numbers. They're unbelievable. And they were. But it also increases your risk of injury. And that started, that happened. Van Vliet was great until he got hurt and then missed games down the stretch. So what if Nurse is more smart? What if he is more liberal with his minutes distribution? Instead of playing 39 minutes a night of these guys, they play 36, which is still high, but it changes stuff. It changes the overall upside of Siakam and Barnes and OG and Trent. But if he's not, like, hasn't learned his lesson, because again, there are no guards on this roster that are good outside of the starters, then you get the huge minutes, but the increased injury risk. It's a tough one. The other thing is, do they change the offense? Last season, it was Van Vliet and Siakam. They were the, they were the two main guys. Now, here are a lot of talk, and I, I don't know how real it is. It's mainly coming from Raptors fans, saying, oh, yeah, they're going to change things. They're just going to put the ball in Scotty Barnes' hands. Van Vliet will just play off ball, become more spot up. I think that's complete garbage, but we'll, we'll see. Do they change that pecking order of where it's Siakam and Van Vliet running things, and then the guys like Ananobi and Barnes and Trent are getting just sort of scrap-type opportunities? Or do we start integrating Barnes as the guy who leads the offense and integrate and runs everything? I, I don't think so. We saw so many times last season when that full complement of players were there. Barnes would play like you know, 16, 17 usage, like low usage and low production. And when players went out, he'd step up. But will they make an overall change to make Barnes in charge of things? And you know, change the dynamic of power in that offense? That actually, I'm going to do it early. Locked on fantasy basketball bowl question. Don't check out. Keep watching the video. Locked on fantasy basketball bowl question. Drop, drop it in the e- body of your email. How many rookie of the year titles has Scotty Barnes stolen from Evan Mobley? The answer is one. So, so put that in your email. Do they need a center on the court? Because Siakam's playing center most of the time. Their bench, which again, I think is a failure from Masai, has like five centers and no guards. There is talk that they will move Gary Trent to the bench and they will start Precious Achua and actually play with, not that Achua's big, he's like 6'9", but at least provide some center-type rim protection. Will they make that move and go with a traditional center more of the time instead of 40 minutes a night of Pascal Siakam playing there and other guys sort of fitting in and around? Pretty sure it won't be Boucher who starts. It'll be Precious or nobody. But that, that's something that could change it off. They want to go more traditional center. Then it does impact, especially Gary Trent. But it impacts Trent and Siakam at center. It impacts um, uh, Ananobi a little bit. It impacts Achua, obviously, and, and some of those bench players also. So there are a lot of trickle effects um, if they do decide that something they didn't want to do last season. Um, they just said, just get our best five on the court. But maybe they think Precious is in the best five and Trent is the sixth guy. That's possible as well. It's also possible, not only possible, but it's also likely that BetOnline.net is the number one source for all football betting info this season. Find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, and in-depth articles and analysis on every game you can find. Now, we were talking about Toronto here. They don't have an NFL team. The closest is Buffalo. And I hope, I'm recording this before, I hope the Dolphins kick their ass on the weekend. But they might not have because the Bills look really good. And I reckon they are Super Bowl favorites. You can find all those odds for every game. Futures as well over at Bet Online. Bet Online remains your continued source for all of your sports wagering information, including live betting and up to the minute scores for every sport out there. It's the fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your favorite games and events, including Major League Baseball, MMA, boxing, and golf. So head to betonline.net or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet Online is where the game starts. Breakout candidates. Precious Achua's up there. Now, there are 
there's plenty of nuance when talking fantasy and talking NBA that people don't always grasp. And maybe I'm I'm probably guilty of that as well. But last season, to begin the season, Precious Achua was one of the worst players in the entire NBA. I've never seen a center be so out of control and have no ability to finish shots at all. He was atrocious, like actually terrible. And that was true, I think. I find it hard to watch the Raptors in October, November, or December and say, you know what, Precious Achua is good because he was shocking. But over the second half of the season, his shooting came along. He was not just throwing up every wild shot in the world and he defended really well and he improved significantly. If he has improved that much and is consistently that good and gets that opportunity to start, we might be looking at a, a breakout candidate here from Precious. I still think he doesn't have the greatest fantasy skill set overall. And I think that you know, there's, you know, he was 293rd in 24 minutes last year. That's shocking. Like That's real bad. Now, could he maybe crack top 200? Could everything go right and he become a top 140 guy? Maybe. He starts bringing some big block numbers, but he hasn't really done that in the past. He's a terrible passer, but he's a shooting there. I don't know. There's something there that we saw. I don't know if we trust it long-term because, again, the first half, worst play I've ever seen. Maybe not, but close enough. Yeah. The second half, really, really strong role player. Let's see if he can push it further to a starter or a starter caliber player. And then I think there is a chance that Scotty Barnes breaks out. Forget all that bullshit at the top. I actually like Scotty Barnes. I think he's, I was wrong on my draft evaluation of him. I didn't like the pick at four. He exceeded that. I still don't know how high his overall ceiling is to become this all NBA level player. I think some people might get a bit carried away with some of the stuff. I think he's really good and yeah, might knock on the door of the all-star game in, in two, three years time. I think he's really good, but it is going to depend if they actually really see this and he becomes this 25 usage guy who orchestrates an offense as a point forward. Uh, maybe that happens. He's definitely on the candidate list to be to be a breakout guy, even though he was so good as a rookie. There is room for, for another step if a lot of stuff happens, but he doesn't have much minute upside. He already played 35 a night last season. He needs to become a better shooter. He needs to be more more reliable and take more threes. Well, we took him at a decent rate, but in the 2022 portion of the season, he shot 30% from three. His floater game was really good. He needs to be a better defender. And I know that sounds crazy considering that's what he came in with, that reputation. I thought he struggled a little bit at times defensively, and he needs to generate more defensive stats for us fantasy-wise. But this, the stuff's all there for a breakout potential for Scott to maybe crack a top 30. I wouldn't draft him there, but maybe he does it. And again, if they if they do it where they do put, say, a true into the starting lineup, then that puts more guard and ball handling responsibilities towards Scott. And, yeah, big numbers might come. Interested to see what they do. There's a lot of questions around this team. Sleepers. I think the Jedi, Urgen and Obi. But what about Scarf? OG. Stop logs. OG. Uh, you better stop OG. I said the other day, I'm not sure I'm going to end up with OG on many of my teams. He's probably getting overdrafted. And I think that's true. His ADP is 57 on Yahoo with 68 on fan tracks. And I'm not really that keen. But on ESPN on 87, I would be. Now, I don't play on any leagues on ESPN because I don't like their platform. Um, but at 87, that's value. And I think Achua, whose fan tracks ADP is 279, is also value. Now, he's got an ADP of 136 on, eight, on Yahoo, which again... He's way, way, way ahead of where he was last year, but I don't mind that as a last-round fly. ESPN's got him unranked, which is understandable. He was pretty poor. But they are some sleeper value guys. And then for points leagues, Siakam is underrated. On Yahoo, he's at 31. On Fantrax, he's 31. He was 16th per game last season. No reason he's not a second-round guy again this season, I think. Now, there is a risk of them dropping the minutes down, but... 31, no, nah, it's too low. He's got to be a second-round guy, I think, at a points league. I'd happily even consider him close to the turn in a points league. He's got a lot of positional versatility as well. Um, I, I like him in that area. For busts, what is Ken Birch doing with an ADP of 107 on Yahoo? Did one person take him at 107 and no one else draft him anywhere else? Because that makes no sense. I don't think Ken Birch is going to be in the rotation. So why is he getting drafted? Just just in case you're in the draft and you see the top of the draft board and Ken Birch is sitting there, don't don't draft him, please. He shouldn't be picked. And also think, yeah, while Ojan and is probably okay at an ADP of 57 for category leagues, I wouldn't do it, but it's probably okay. In a points league, I wouldn't. That's probably 30 spots too high in a Yahoo points league for OG. I just think he's, he's not a great points league guy. He's probably going to be fifth offensive option, maybe fourth if pressure starts. 
in that starting group. We like what he can do steals-wise. He can block some shots. He can hit some threes. He's a pretty good scorer, but he didn't take the leap that I thought he might have last season. And with Barnes now establishing himself, I don't don't think Ananobi's going to have that opportunity to take that big step, unfortunately. As much as I like him as a player, I'm not sure he's going to have that chance. Guys taking the last round, Achua, I already mentioned, um, probably doesn't work out, but he's worth looking at. And then the other one is Boucher. Now, I, I really don't believe in this. Boucher last season um, played better, but only 21 minutes and 180, ranked 187th. Maybe he gets the block rate back up, but Boucher just signed a new contract. He's about to turn 30. And then on the bench, he's got to compete with Precious and Otto and Thad Young. And there's Ken Birch if he plays. There's Juancho Hernan Gomez on this team. There's Christian Coloco, who I'm not sure how much they played, but the bench is all centers. So yeah, maybe take a flyer on him because he does have some interesting permitted upside. But I think that maybe has waned a little bit as well with the change to his game to stay out of foul trouble, to stay in Nick Nurse's graces and not be so aggressively chasing blocks or taking terrible shots. Just play more within the scheme, play more within the defense. It works out for him in terms of getting playing time, but the stats definitely suffered. And we saw that last season. I think it's going to be more of that same. So I definitely prefer to take a Chua over Boucher because I just think there's more minutes upside for him. And even that permanent beast that Boucher used to be, it just isn't there anymore, I don't think. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he goes back to his old ways and Nurse loves it and plays him all these minutes. I really don't think that's possible. But some will, some will believe that. Not me. Let's look at the roster. Van Vliet, he's a really, really solid second round-ish sort of player. My issue with Van Vliet, you got to punt field goals with him for a start, which is okay. There's no problem with that whatsoever, right? He was 21st last season without punting. But will they this is will they play him 38 minutes? His ADP is 30 on Yahoo, it's 35 on fan tracks, it's 34 on ESPN. And actually, I thought my projections would have him higher than that, and they don't. Now, if you punt field goals, he, he does jump up and he gets a significant boost into that third round, maybe late second. I've got no problem taking him late second. But if instead of 38, he plays 36. That value that he peaked at last season probably can't be achieved. There's Gary Trent, who also played out of his mind last season. I know people will tell me he was a top 50 player. That's only if you count turnovers, and you shouldn't. But he was awesome. He was much better than I anticipated because he doubled his steal rate. And it's really hard to go in and project someone to pick a random category and go, right, you're going to be doubly as good as this as you were in previous years. It's really hard to do. It's irresponsible to do it. Trent was really good, but he still, like Van Vliet, is a guy that takes too many shots or misses too many shots. Will that steal rate, which was one of the highest in the league and already came down over the last two months of the season, it got back to normal. If it doesn't stay at that 1.7, 1.8 number, then that top 100 is gone for him. Because his value is points three steals. Because he's no rebounds, no assists, bad field goals, and never gets to the line. So if his steal rate goes from 1.8 or 1.7 down to 1.4, still a good number, but that's 20 spots gone, 30 spots gone. If he moves to the bench instead of playing 34 minutes and plays 30 minutes while he's cooked. And I think he might be at risk of being a bust. He's got an ADP of 98, 93 on fan tracks, 106 on ESPN, which is, again, way lower than where he actually finished last season. That's banking in a little bit of regression, which I agree with. I've just got more regression tacked onto it. I could be really wrong on that. Maybe he just keeps going and generating five steel games every, every second game. But also, down the stretch, that did tend to drop off a little bit. The ten, oh, actually, I'm actually going to double check that. For some, it's in my head that it dropped off. Maybe I'm wrong. But you know, there is, there is the, the minutes risk as well. The fact that there might be pressure starting and Trent coming off the bench. He's a massive drain in field goal percentage. Yeah, I was right. He was at 1.8 for the season, 1.4 over the last month in steals, and 1.6 over the last two months. So he was tracking it over two for a while, and then that gradually came down as the season went on. So, and again, he'd never been at that unbelievable elevated level. So we'll see where it, it sort of sits. And Anobi, I spoke about, he's a good mid-range guy that I'm not sure he's going to be someone I really target all that often. And then Barnes, um, where is Scotty Barnes, ADP? It's at 48 on Yahoo, 64 on ESPN, which I think is a little bit of value, and 52 on Fantrax. I think that's all about right. He was 67th overall in category leagues last season. I think he does take a step up. Does he take it into the 40s? into the 30s. I think he's probably around 40, 45 to 55 around that area, which is a step forward. But we like to look at second year guys like what's the step forward? 
And what's changed around him? The answer is nothing. So it needs internal improvement and a big usage spike. And he doesn't have the ability to also have a big minutes rise. He's at 36 minutes already last season, 35 minutes last season. So there's not a huge... Like he can't go from 30 minutes to 34 or 35. He can't take that big of a leap with minutes. It's going to come down to being a little bit more efficient and getting way more shots and more ball handling opportunities. And I think that might be a third year thing for him rather than a second year thing. And Siakam's a great late late second to early third round player in category leagues, early second in points leagues. Um, again, he did it on 38 minutes a night last season. So that can come down. He doesn't block shots, but he scores well. His passing was great. It was awesome down the stretch. He rebounded well. He hit threes. And I think he can still be a little bit better with some of his shooting numbers as well. And that's your starters, I think. Van Vliet, Trent, Ananobi, Barnes, Siakam, with the caveat that I've mentioned a million times that I think Precious might start over Trent. And then it's where the bench gets weird because there's Porter, there's Boucher, there's Achua, there's Stad. They're the four best bench players and they're all either power forwards, in Porter's case, or centers with Boucher, Achua, and Thad Young. How do they all fit on the court together? And that's not even to mention the 33rd overall pick, Christian Coloco, who's actually the only guy who's center size. He's like seven foot. No one else is that big. So, yeah, I'm not... Otto Porter might be the 140th best player, but his upside is 136th. Like, I don't want to draft him in a 12-team league. In a 14-team league, in round 12, sure. In a 12-teamer, I'm just not interested as a last pick. And it's not like he's guaranteed a 25-minute-a-night role here, Porter. He played 22 last season. He was 153rd. He's obviously a year older. He's going to miss some time. They've got the guys to replace him. And there's just too many guys there to suggest he's going to play 25 or 26 minutes. Malachi Flynn's a little bit of a wild card. They need guards. They don't have them. Flynn's a guy who theoretically I think should be a good NBA player, but hasn't really shown it. He can run, pick, and roll. I think he should be able to shoot. He can pass. And they desperately need a backup point guard. I think I, I, I don't think Delano Banton is it. He's such a weird player. Um, I know Raptors fans love him. He's a high rebounding, interesting passer, bad shooter. Low usage guy. I, I don't think he's the answer. But somebody needs to step up as a backup point guard. So watch for Flynn. Coloco, really good shot blocker. I think he's got a little bit of shooting touch. I don't think he's going to play enough with so many other centers around. Champagny had that game winner that got waved off last season. And there's one show. But like Porter, Boucher, Achua, Young, one show plays the four. Look, where are the minutes? I know he had a great run at Eurobasket. I know people love him because they call him Bo Cruz. Like, where does he play? And he's not that good in the NBA. So he's there, but is he there? Does he remain? And they're two-way guys are Jeff Doughton and Ronnie Harper. They've also got Josh Jackson, Gabe Brown, and DJ Wilson currently on the roster, but the, those three guys need to get cut. And they're the three guys that I do think end up getting cut for the Toronto Raptors. So sorry, again, about the clickbait title on the video. Scotty Barnes isn't a bust, quite clearly. I don't hate the Raptors as much. I don't hate them at all. In fact, Nick Nurse is one of my favorite coaches, and there's so many of these players. I love OG Ananobi. I like these guys, but Raptors fans get fired up, so let's lean into it. Let's get the hate watchers. Let's get some hate porn going. Follow this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app here on YouTube. You thumb it up. You leave your comments down below. I'm sure you're going to thumb it down as well. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.